Hey guys, this is a quick video on comparing functions. It's typically a eighth grade standard. Um, when we compare functions, we're basically comparing the relationship between two different quantities. And in this, in this, in these two uh, examples that I have, have here, um, we're comparing functions. Uh, one given by an equation. Um, albeit that it's not in slope intercept form, you could change it to that if you wanted to. Um, and then we got another um, function here, but this is represented in a table. And then down below, we'll compare a table or chart to a graph. Okay, so let's get started. So doctors have two methods of calculating maximum heart rate. Maximum heart rate. So they want to know, depending on your age, what should they expect that your maximum heart rate could get to? Because at a certain point, if your heart goes over the maximum heart rate that's you know expected for the age that you're at, um, that can lead to uh, serious consequences if not treated. And I'm not talking about exercising here. We're talking about a resting heartbeat being at a higher um, beat per minute rate. Okay. So, they have two methods. The first method that they use to, to find a maximum heart rate, uh, which again is Y. Y is the heart rate, heart rate beats per minute. X is based on the age, okay, person's age. So what they do is, the first one is they just simply take 220, they subtract the person's age from 220, and that's going to be um, the, heart, the heart rate. So, for example, I'm 44, so for me, it'd be 220. 220 minus 44 is 176, so my maximum heart rate would be 176 beats per minute. Okay, so you just subtract your age. If you're a 20 year old, your maximum heart rate or heart and beats per minute would be 200. Okay, so that's one method. The other method is using this chart here. So this chart here is you just basically you find your age. Again, I'm 44, so I'm going to be kind of in between uh, 180 and 173. So, you know, I'm probably about 176.5, somewhere around there. 177, 177, okay? So it's kind of a, it's just a guide to, to kind of take a look at. So it's a quick guide. This one's a little bit harder because you have to subtract. This one might be a little bit easier because you can just kind of, guess about where your age is. If you're younger than 20, then eh, you might have to create a longer table, right? You might have to go back. So again, this, this goes down seven beats here, seven beats here, seven beats here. So that means you add seven beats to that, it'd be 201 for a 10 year old. And then 208 for a zero, zero year old or like baby infant. Um, anyways. So, number one, which method gives the greater maximum heart rate for a 70-year-old? Well, we don't have a 70-year-old here at that chart. We could take 70 for this, for this method. We could just simply just do 220 minus 70. And that would give us our value for Y. So, that would be 150. So, 150 would be the first method, right? So, the first method gives us a heart rate of 150 beats per minute, that's going to be the maximum heart rate for a 70 year old for the first method. The second method is using this chart, or this table I should say, it doesn't go up to 70 but you can make it. If this increases by 10 each time on the age and this decreases by 7 each time, well I'm going to subtract 7 from here and I should get 159. Okay, so that's the second method. So the second method says a 70-year-old will have a heart rate, maximum heart rate, at 159 beats per minute. So which method gives you a greater maximum heart rate? The first method or the second? In this case, it's going to be the second method. And the last question here is, are the heart rate and age proportional or non-proportional for each method? Well, at age zero, we know that the resting heartbeat, or not the heart, resting heartbeat, the maximum heartbeat in terms of beats per minute 
would be uh, 208, I believe, right? If we had 7 here, this would be 201, 201 for a 10-year-old, and then for like a, an infant, it would be about 208, roughly, okay? So if that's the case, it doesn't start at 0, 0. This doesn't start at 0, 0. And because it doesn't start at 0, 0, the first method is not proportional. Okay? So first method is non-proportional. If you look here at this one, same thing. If you were to rewrite this equation in slope-intercept form, this would be y equals negative x plus 220. Well, you've got a y-intercept here. That is your y-intercept. Because you have a y-intercept that's not 0, the second method also is non-proportional. Remember, to be proportional, you have to go through 0. You have to either originate at 0 or go through 0 to be proportional. So those, both meth both, those methods here, both of them, are non-proportional. Okay? Moving on. Example 2. Uh, the table and graph shows the miles driven and the gas used for two scooters. So you got scooter A in a little chart or table, if you will, going up and down. And you've got scooter B represented in a uh, graph. I personally like graphs because it's easier to see, easier to kind of interpret. Um, now we can see some differences. We've got 2 gallons, 4, 6, 8, 10 gallons. We see one gallon, two gallons, three gallons, four gallons, um, five gallons, and, and the like. Now, if we look at three gallon, we look at three gallons. We see it's 270 miles, but there's no three gallons here. If we go to one gallon, we see 90 miles, but we don't have one gallon here. So you've got a couple things that you can do to compare the two. You can create one for one gallon here, find the unit rate. If it takes two gallons to go 150 miles, then you know if you divide 150 by 2, you get that one, one gallon rate, that unit rate. So when you divide that by 2, you get 75. So it means it's 75 miles to one gallon for scooter A. Well, if you look here, one gallon for scooter B is 90 miles. So scooter B is going to go 15 more miles than this one, than scooter A. So if you look at the question here in number one, it says if scooter uses fewer gallons, well, if this is going to go further per gallon, right, if it's going to go 15 more miles on, on a gallon, well, this is going to take less gallons to get to 1,350 miles. So scooter B is going to be the winner on that one. Okay? And if you're not sure, you just divide this by 90, to find out how many gallons it would take. And that would be what? 1,350 miles divided by 90 miles to the gallon is 15. So this would take 15, 15 gallons to get to that distance. If you divide 1,350 divided by 75 miles to the gallon, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, 75 you get 18 gallons. Well, guess what? Again, B would win. It takes less fuel for scooter B to get, you'd save three gallons of fuel. Number two, are gas used in miles proportion, gas used in miles proportional or non-proportional for each scooter? So if no gas is being used, are they going anywhere? No, no distance. So you can see they both start at zero, zero, Right? If this was zero, this would be zero as well. So they're both going to be proportional. Proportional means they start at zero, zero, and that's that. And that is all I got for you today. Hopefully that helps. Again, comparing functions is very similar to that of comparing linear equations. You're just interpreting um, what you have in front of you, whether it's a chart table or graph. God bless. Have a great night. Take care. Bye-bye.